Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to how to build an Android app to control your Wi-Fi enabled Arduino. So in this video tutorial, we're gonna do just that. And I think you're gonna be surprised how easy it actually is. So let's get started. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna build an example Android app to control our Arduino or to get information from Arduino remotely over the internet or Wi-Fi. So here's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use the Arduino Maker 1000. You could also use the Arduino Wi-Fi Shield. Now, I've only tried this with the uh, MKR 1000, but the MKR 1000 uses the same library, Wi-Fi libraries as the Wi-Fi Shield, so you should be able to use that as well. We're just gonna use the Arduino LED. And then to make the Android app, we're gonna use M MIT's App Inventor 2. So this is a web browser based programming interface for creating apps for Android and it's graphical programming instead of text programming and it's actually real easy to use. So we're gonna make, what's important to note is we're gonna make an example app real simple and the idea is it's for you to use and build on for your particular application. Okay, let's look at the Arduino code first. Okay, here we are at the Arduino sketch I leveraged a lot of this right out of the examples and just made a couple changes. So here's my library calls. Here's the main library for the Wi-Fi. And it's important to note, you know, over Wi-Fi or Ethernet, there's a lot of different types of communication protocols you can use. TCIP is an example of one. Here we're using sort of the web services communication capability. So for instance, in this sketch, we're essentially hosting a web page that the app will access and then we can, based on the address or, yeah, based on the address we send to the web page, we can actually then control the Arduino and make changes. And so that's what we're gonna do here. So I declare some variables. One of the variables I declare here is digital pin six. That's gonna be the LED control for the Maker 1000. Here I put your network and your password. This is where you wanna put your local Wi-Fi network and the password and the password for that network. Here I declare the Wi-Fi server object. So we're starting a server and we declare 80 for port 80. And for ethernet based networks, you have different ports and port 80 is the one they use for internet communication or web communication. Here's our setup code. If you notice, I commented out all the serial communication. Now, if you want, when you do this, you can comment it back in and you can use it for troubleshooting and to you know see the, the information of your Wi-Fi network. Note that if you do uncomment it because there's this while statement with the serial, you need to have your serial monitor open for the web server to start up. Here we just check to make sure the, make sure the Wi-Fi shield is present. We then do our connection right here. And just so you note, there's a 10 second delay here. So the connection is gonna take a while. So give it some time when you first start it up. But once you have the Arduino running, it'll stay connected. We start our server object. We go in the main loop. And what we're doing here in the main loop is we're looking for a client. And the client is gonna be our Android phone with the app. So once we detect a client trying to connect, we then go into this if statement, and that's where we're gonna do our magic. We're gonna look for information from the client. We're gonna make reading so i'm going to show an analog pin being read and displayed on the web page and the client can then gra grab that information and based on the address the client sends us the address is going to be based off the arduino's ip address which i'll talk about later and then based on what we put in that exact address an h for high and an l for low we'll turn the led on the arduino high or low so it may be a little confusing at first, but as we show the example and the app, it'll all come together. Speaking of the app, let's look at the code for the app. So here we are at the MIT App Inventor 2's interface, and this is web browser hosted. I'll have the, uh, the address on the comment section, but it's right here to get to the MIT App Inventor. You create an account, it's real easy to use. I'm not gonna do a full tutorial here. They have examples to help you get started. But here essentially is the app's user interface. And so for instance, you can grab things like buttons 
And that's exactly what I did here. And then I named my buttons LED on, turn LED off. And if I go to those buttons, I can then change their size and the text on them and things like that. So there's my two buttons. And then I pulled a web viewer object. And that's what you're seeing here with the globe in it. And of course, just like the buttons, I can make changes to that as well. Now here's when you go to the blocks section, this is where you see the actual code and it's visual. So here is my different button calls. So you can almost think of these, these C-shaped calls like functions. So for instance, if I go here, here's some example functions and then you can go to a function specific to the objects you created. So these are the buttons and I pulled those out One's turn on and one is turn off. And these correspond to the buttons you saw in the user interface. These other ones can correspond to the object, the web viewer object you saw in the interface. And all I do here is I use a text object to say the address. So this 192.168.1.13 is the IP address of the Arduino that's gonna be on my home network. So you'll need to change this address based on the Arduino's IP address. And where do you get this Arduino IP address? Well, you can get it first from the serial monitor code that I have commented out, because it'll print it out. You can also get it from your router at home. And then this slash high and slash low is what I use to control the LED. And another thing that happens is the web viewer pulls in the web page from the web server on the Arduino, and remember, we print out an example analog pin reading, and so we'll see that on the web object on the user interface. So what I'm gonna to do to share this is there's a .aia file. So I'm gonna either share that with a link or on GitHub, and I'll provide a link on the description page or the description of this video so you can access it. But it's a .aia file, and when you have your MIT App Inventor profile, you can actually then load projects from the .aia file so you can load this example project and then build on it for your own. Just to note, you need to download a, a companion app to do some testing here, but once you do that, you can then use that to scan this QR code to test your app. So it's really easy to test it and then at a certain point, you can actually generate a real app and put it on your Android phone. But once again, I encourage you to do some of the tutorials here before you, you dive into this example. Let's look at an example video where I show the app and the Arduino in action. Okay, here's the app. You can see the, the buttons, turn LED on, turn LED off on my Android phone. There's my MKR setup and all I have here is the LED is gonna be over here. This is just the power LED. The LED you're looking for is over here. So keep an eye out for it when I do the testing. And then this, this wire is just connecting that analog pin to VCC that it's gonna display. And if you're unfamiliar with the MKR1000, it's, it's fairly new. Here is the, the Wi-Fi section as well as the microcontroller. And if you're interested in getting one of these, I sell these on forstronics.com, so you can grab one there. So here I show it, then we go back to the app, I press the button. Notice now, this is a little blurry, here the LED is actually on now. You can see that, and then also notice, we now see the value of A0, which is 1023, which is what we expect because we're measuring VCC. Here now, I'm just gonna press the buttons a little back and forth. I turn the LED off, it's blurry. I then turn it on and off, and you can kind of see it in the background here, turning on or off. So, pretty cool, pretty easy. So let's talk a little bit about the, the router and some conditions for using this on your network. Okay, what you're looking at here is the web page for my router. So most routers, Wi-Fi routers have a web page that you can access from your local network at home to change the settings. Here's an example of the one I have. I have a Netgear router. So I'll just say, you know, go to your, your router's directions. Don't ask me questions about your router because every router is different. 
But what I want to show here is you can actually go into your router, get information on what's connected to it. I'm not showing that on this page. So you can see actually the Arduino's IP address if you want to. Now what I want to show here though is your router may change the IP address of devices connected to it. You can't guarantee that the IP addresses will always be the same. So that's not good if you if you make a if you make an app because what if you hard code in the IP address and it later changes? Well, you can actually tell your router to use the same IP address for certain devices and it's called using a static IP address. So that's what I did here in my Netgear router. I went to the LAN setup. So I went into my router and I used a static IP address and I set the Arduino device, which has a MAC address, which you can't see. And I said, make sure you use this same IP address for this device always. Don't ever change the IP address for this device. So that way it has the same IP address all the time and my app will work. Another thing that's definitely worth mentioning is this app will only work on your local router network. So when you're in your home, you can control your Arduino from the app, you can get readings, but if you leave your home and you try to do the same thing, it will not work. The reason is, is because your router blocks incoming traffic into your network. Your router says, I will only allow devices inside my network to start conversations with devices outside. I will not let outside devices start conversations with devices inside the network. And your router does that to protect you from you know, cyber attacks and things like that. Now there is ways to get around that. And I'm gonna do that in future videos, talk about that. So one way is to have an intermediary cloud program that the Arduino on your network talks to and then your, your app can then talk to the cloud and it serves as that intermediary. Another way is to poke a hole in your firewall to talk directly to the device on your network. And I'll, I'll talk about both these methods in a, I don't know if I wanna call it a part two, but in a future video. In this one though, I wanted to show you just how you can easy and quick you can get started to create sort of an IoT app, but right now can only be used in your local Wi-Fi network. Okay, that's it for this video. If you have any comments or anything to add, please do so in the comments section. As I mentioned, there's gonna be some follow-up parts to this video. If you go to the description section, you'll find information to access the code and as well as the Android code from this video. Thank you for watching.